Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch are calling on Zimbabwe's government to stop the arbitrary arrest and detention of opposition and civil society members ahead of this weekend's Southern African Development Community SADC Summit in Horari. Zimbabwe Information Minister Jenfa Munswari told VOA via WhatsApp that the allegations are hogwash. Idris Ali Nasser is a senior Africa researcher for Human Rights Watch. He tells me that SADC leaders should condemn the government's human rights violations and demand the release of all those unjustly arrested. What we are saying is that the SADC summit cannot be used as reason to dismantle fundamental and basic uh, freedoms and, and, and human rights that are protected under international law. And we've seen this happen uh, the last couple of days where it's the latest example of the escalation of their violations against the civilian population in Zimbabwe, throwing a very wide dragnet of jailing perceived critics, jailing and targeting innocent civilians, harassing families of those that are perceived to be critics of the of the government. So you were saying that uh, more than 160 people were arrested since mid-June. I spoke with uh, the Zimbabwe Minister of Information. Of course, uh, he refused an official on-the-record interview, but he said to me that uh, in a message on WhatsApp that your allegations are a hog wash. And he also said that the government did not suspend law and order and that criminals will always be arrested. In other words, the government is abiding by the rule of law. Uh, it's unfortunate that um, that is what is coming out of the authorities in Zimbabwe, but the facts speak for themselves. For example, on June 16, the Zimbabwe Republic Police uh, raided a private home in a suburb of Harare and arrested over 70 people, most of them young, in what was a, you know, an attack on the right to peaceful assembly and the freedom of association. Many of these surveyed 70 people, according to their lawyers, and this has been articulated in court, were assaulted, were beaten up, were tortured. Some of them have showed up in court uh, with broken limbs. This is a fact, and since June 16th, several times, uh, they've been denied bail. Idris, uh, what would you like for Sadek to do then? So we are saying that Sadek should use the August summit, and importantly, President Mangago, who's going to assume the chairmanship of that, of that regional bloc, as an opportunity to encourage Zimbabwe to put in place key reforms to improve human rights, democracy, rule of law. And we're also saying that Sadak should speak out against this intensified crackdown against the opposition, against civil society members, against families, against uh, you know, the civilian population. We have seen in the last few days, for example, the rolling out of military tanks onto the streets of Harare and into the townships in a clear act of intimidation of the civilian population. And uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, the SADC bloc has not said anything uh, about it. And I think it, it is imperative for SADC to say something publicly about these human rights violations. SADC needs to take a clear stand against the crackdown. They also need to push on Zimbabwe and demand an immediate and unconditional release of everybody who has been arbitrarily detained simply for exercising their constitutional rights. Idris Ali Nasser is a senior Africa researcher at Human Rights Watch. He was speaking with me from Lusaka, Zambia. The Chief of Defense Forces, CDF General Mohozi Kaine Rugaba, has met with his Rwandan counterpart, General Mubarak Muganga. Chief of Defense Staff of the Rwanda Defense Forces at the RDF headquarters in Kigali. The meeting, which took place on Monday afternoon, was attended by senior military officials, including the Chief of Defense, Intelligence and Security, Major General James Sibilungi and Brigadier General Richard Karemile from the Ugandan side. On the Rwandan side, Lieutenant General Vicente Nyakalundi was among the senior officers present. General Kaine Rugawa described the meeting as a written visit following his counterpart's visit to Kampala in May. According to a brief statement from the CDF's office, the meeting aimed at discussing bilateral and regional security matters. Such engagements are routine and part of ongoing security dialogues between Uganda and Rwanda, highlighting the strong relations between the two countries. The brief reads in part. 
During his visit to Kigali, General Muhozi Kainerugawa also attended President Paul Kagame's swearing-in ceremony at the Amahoro Stadium, which took place on Sunday. General Muhozi has in recent years prompted healthy bilateral ties with Rwanda. Mohozi has in the past few years established a strong relationship with Rwanda's top leadership. He is credited for restoring bilateral ties between Uganda and Rwanda which had collapsed. Officials say the two countries now work more closely on countering cross-border crimes.